start here. Okay, so before I actually start to uh, talk about the main topic, um, how many people have been taking online classes this semester? Right now. Okay. Um, the district is uh, actually starting an auditing program on online classes, which means you know between now and the end of this semester, which is not a whole lot of weeks, uh, the district will actually send people into their into online classes to audit how those online classes are conducted, specifically to look for uh, what we call REC and RSI. REC stands for Regular Effective Contact, and RSI stands for Regular Substantive Interaction. Okay, they're just buzzwords, fancy words, to basically say, are your professors responding to your answers or questions, and are they kind of reminding you guys to do the homework and what chapter to read for the next week and so on and so forth, okay, with online classes, okay? And so just something that you might be interested to know is you know, that is happening. But as far as I know, they're not going to send an auditor into this class and say, you know, let's see what attack is actually interacting with his students or not. Or is he just completely ignoring all the students and talking to the screen the whole time? <laughs> all right. So what I'll do is I'm going to write a program that has some resemblance to what you need to do, but obviously not everything that you need to do. Okay? So you kind of have to take this with a grain of salt and go, okay, you know, I know it is related to what I need to do, but how much of it, you know, I can I borrow and how much changes do I need to do to it? Okay? So what I'll do is I'm gonna start with a program that I just call crossmatch. Okay, crossmatch.cpg. And here is the program. Constant number number of items. Okay. So the number of items is just a number. I'll just pick four here. And I'm gonna have two arrays. Okay, so we'll have array um, just to make sure that this is not entirely the homework assignments that you have to do. This is how I do it. Um, I'm going to use char array instead of int arrays here, okay? So char array, uh, we'll call this A1. It has num items. And then we have A2, which is also an array of num items inside it, okay? And I need to put something into the arrays to process, okay? So what I'll do is I'm just going to use a long scan f to do this, okay? So just so that this, I don't give away this part to your homework assignment. I don't think it's going to be a big issue. You know, but, yeah. Just thinking about how to do this. I will defer this to string. Never use this. Okay, great. I'm going to use read. STD, UNI STD. Okay, there we go. Okay, got it. Now, this part obviously is not going to apply to your program. So, I'm not going to. All this does is to read. Um, up to num item characters into A1 from standard input file, and those will be read as characters. We doing okay so far? Is this part related to your homework assignment? The answer is absolutely not. <laughs> not this part. Because all this is going to do is to read a certain number, which is num items, of characters into uh, the character array A1. Are you dealing with characters? Nope. All right. Well, then it does not. It, it does not relate directly. The zero is basically standard input file. So in other words, read can actually read from any file, 
but in this case, in both cases, I'm specifying the standard input file. Okay. So I'm reading uh, four characters in this case into A1, four characters into A2, and that's it. I will ignore the rest of standard input file. And I'm going to pound include sddio.h just so that I can print stuff out. Okay. So the way I set up the loops is like this int i equal to zero, initialize to zero, i is less than num items. In fact, I'm going to do it the wrong way just so that people have to fix this up to make it work the correct way. And I know some people who are not here will skim will basically skim the video for stuff that they can copy and because they're not listening to the audio which explicitly stated this is not you what you should be doing you know you have to make some changes to it I've seen some people will ignore that and just take a screenshot and go like okay I'll just copy as much as I can <laughs> and it will work for the case in the mm.h as the way it is defined right now just not the way when I grade it <clears throat> okay so when you look at this setup here, the double loop, which is the main concept here, okay, you know, is by the time I get to line 16, I will have variable, local variable i, and I will have local variable j defined. Local variable i is going to go from 0 to 4, but each for each value of i, j is also going to 0 to 3. Excuse me, I, I misspoke, you know, i would go from 0 to 3, and j would also go from 0 to 3. And I forgot the initialization of j. I've got a 0 here. Okay, there we go. So the first thing I would do is just to do something like this. Okay. I just want to know what is i and j by the time I get here. Is that okay? So let's go ahead and just do you know, g++. In this case, I'm just going to do dash o because I've only got one source file, you know, which may, means, you know, if I separate the compiling from the linking, it doesn't really gain me much. So I'm just going to combine the two steps into one. Okay. That's four characters. That's four characters. Press the enter key, and that's what it prints. Does that make any sense to you? For each value of i, which is the first number, it will, the j is going to go from 0 to 3 make sense, right? Do you think this might have something to do with your homework assignment? Okay. So the second thing I would do is is to keep track of stuff, okay? So I'm going to say number of matches. And we'll go ahead and initialize matches to zero. So when I get to here, instead of just printing i and j, what I'll do is I'm going to say matches plus equal to a ternary operator, you know, which means it has the question mark and the colon. So I'm going to say if a1 bracket i equals to a2 bracket j, if it does match, then I'll increment by 1. If it does not match, I'll increment by zero, which means I'm not changing matches. Are we doing okay so far with this? And when I get out of both loops, I'm just going to say printf number of matches is percent %d and just give it matches as a parameter. Okay. In other words, I'm not going to print anything in the loop itself. But after the double loop or the, in the nested loop, I'm going to print the number of matches. But remember, this is a total number. There's no such thing as number of black packs, number of white packs, and so on. Okay? All I'm doing is just cross-matching everything. So we'll go ahead and specify return 0. And we'll recompile the program. And rerun the program. Okay. So this time when we rerun the program, I'll give it a really easy test case. Okay? The first four characters are A, B, C, D, and then the next four are 0, 1, 2, 3. What do you think this program should print? Does anything match between the two arrays? Nothing, right? Because the first array has the ASCII, code, ASCII codes of A, B, C, D all lowercase. 
The second array has 0, 1, 2, 3, the ASCII code of the digits 0, 1, 2, and 3. Do you think they should match at all? Nope, nothing should match. So this program should print the number of matches is 0. Makes perfect sense. Is that okay so far? Okay. Next one is going to be a little bit more tricky. A, B, C, D up here. And then we'll have 0, A, B, oh, 0, A, 2, 3. What do you think this program should print this time? In one array, we have A, B, C, D. In the other array, we have 0, A, 2, 3. And I cross match everything that is possible. What do you think? What do you think it should print? Should be one. Is that making any sense? The A of the first array of A, B, C, D should match the A of the second array, which is the second element. Okay. But they're in separate positions. Right? Hmm? Doesn't that make a difference? Well, because I cross match all the possible I and Js. So eventually it should match. It would, would give you a match of one. Cool. And let's try this one too. A, A, okay, A, B, C, A. And then in the second array we have zero, A, zero, zero. How many times do you think uh, matches, the number of matches should print in this case? It would, make, it would match twice because the first A of the first array will match the second A in the second array, but the last A will match that A again. Okay, so let's, let's, let's check. It does match twice. Let's see if we can double that. A, B, C, A, and then we have zero, A, A, zero. That will give me four because I am not remembering whether something has been matched already. Is that okay? What about this? They're all matching, right? So when you look at the first time we ran this program, Zero 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 one zero two zero three one zero one two one zero one 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 two one three. Every single combination is going to match because they are all A's. So how many times you know do you think it has matched in this case? Sixteen times. Four times four. Now, one general rule of thumb is when you add the number of black packs and the number of white packs, the total should never exceed, well, four, okay, or the number of packs in each pack, okay? So if you add up the number of white packs and the number of black packs, and if they add up to more than the number of packs in a pattern, something is not right. That's one quick way to tell whether your numbers make sense or not. Are we doing okay so far with this? So what you need to do is to look at this code and you say, well, it does seem to implement some of the things that we need to do to calculate the number of white pegs, but obviously this is flawed. So you have to figure out why it is flawed and how to fix it. So what you need to do actually is to say, okay, if there is a match, you need to remember something is already matched and do not match that thing again and that applies to both arrays the first array and also the second array so when you cross out it is not sufficient to cross out only one of the arrays you have to cross out the element in both arrays so you need some way to remember that there are different ways to do it it's up to you guys to decide you know, how you want to do it um, so are there any questions about the algorithm, which is really the main part of this homework assignment. No questions? Okay, I would even do something like this, okay? <clears throat> I would, I would do it, but I'm not going to explain it, okay? So you guys will have to kind of figure out what it, 
what it means. I'll have m1 and m2. And both will be initialized. m1 is 0, m2 is 0. But down here, this is what I'll do. I'm going to say m1 plus equal to a ternary operator. And this one will basically spell out two things. So instead of using one single counter for all the matches, now we have M1 and M2. And the condition to increment M1 and M2, they're both based on what we had before. But in addition to checking whether A1 bracket I equals to A, uh, A2, ah, in these typos, instead of just checking the second condition, now it also has a first condition to check for those of you who do not know the ordering of the operators, the comparisons always take place before the conjunction. So even without additional par uh, parentheses, it still means the same thing, but this makes it more explicit. OK. All right. So this is how I change the program. If you add up M1 and M2, the sum of these two would still be the same as number of matches from the previous program. So what I'll do is go to this line and just say M1 is and M2 is. some simple cases first. What do you think should happen this time? <clears throat> what should be the values of M1 and M2? Well, should anything match at all? Yeah. Nothing. Okay, but that's good. What about um, this one? We go from no matching to everything matches. But what is the output? What is M1 and what is M2? M1 requires the two elements having the same value, but also needs the indexes to be the same. So M1 can only be up to 4. And then M2 should account for everything else, which in this case should be 12. Because M2 is the one that gets, that gets incremented when there is a match, but the indexes do not line up. Is that OK so far? OK, let's try another one. What about this one? The first array is going to be A, B, C, D. The second array is going to be D, C, B, A. So we have the same elements in both arrays, but every single element is not matching in terms of position. So M1 should be a 0, and then M2 should be, should be a 4 in this case. It's simple because we don't have two out, we don't have the same value appearing twice. So 0 and 4 is, in fact, the correct answer. Okay, let's try again. A, B, C, D. This time we have D, C, B, B. Okay. So think about this one and tell me what should be the uh, M1 and M2. M1 is still the easy one. What should be M1? M1 means you know, th the number of matches that both have the indexes matching and also the values matching. Should still be zero. Okay, that's the easy one. M2 is a little bit more tricky this time. M2 means you know we have a match, except the index does not match up. But the same item can be matched any number of times. So what do you think should happen this time? Hmm? 
Okay, A cannot be matched, okay? So everything that starts with A, you know, would not match anything, but B would match twice. C will match once, D will match once. So we will still end up with a four as M2. Does that make any sense? So that is a tricky one. It is a tricky because it's a tricky one because B, uh, even though B only should be matched once, it is matching twice because we did not cross it out after the first match. Are we doing okay so far with this code? Does everybody see how this may be related to your code, but it doesn't quite get the whole job done? Well, which is the intention. I mean, I did not intend to get your homework assignment done, but I did intend to give you the general structure of the code and what is important when you do the comparison. What is missing is the is a mechanism to say that, hey, if something is matched already, do not try to match it again. That mechanism is missing. And that's why it's giving you the wrong answers. Okay. Any questions about this code? Yep. I'm um, just curious, uh, for our mm.cpp uh, file, mm -hmm. what will our headers look like? We have the pound include mm.h, but would we also have the pound include uh, main.cpp? No. Main.cpp is not needed by mm.cpp. In fact, if you pound include main.cpp, there'll be problems. The linker will, will definitely not like it. So just mm.h? Well, mm.h is needed for sure. Yeah. But as you write your code, you will figure out what, is, what else is needed. Right. The compiler will complain. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let, let's take a look at this code here. Let me see if you guys have any questions about it. No questions? So the best way to get this homework assignment started is to come up with test cases and go like, Okay, if this is the hidden pattern and this is the guess pattern, this should be the number of white, uh, black packs and this should be the number of white packs. Come up with a whole bunch of examples. Double check, cross check by hand first to make sure that you have, you, you, that you know how to figure out the answer. And then write your code and use those test cases to test your code. Are there any questions about this homework assignment? If there are no questions, I'm going to turn off the recorder because you know, that really is the extent of what I want to demonstrate.